Chapter one introduces the concept of abstraction. Abstraction is one of the big ideas in computer science, and you're going to see examples of abstraction throughout the textbook. We use abstraction to help us simplify things and to make it easier for us to write our computer programs. Here is the textbook definition for abstraction. It is a mental model. It's a, a way to think about something, and it removes or hides complex detail. And here is one of my favorite definitions of abstraction. Abstraction is doing just what our small minds need, making it possible for us to think about important properties of our program, its behavior, without having to think about the entirety of the machinations. Now that sounds a little complex, but we'll give some examples in just a minute. Before we give those examples, let's think about the two concepts behind abstraction. Abstraction means you are removing detail. You're leaving out many of the properties of your project and only focusing on one or two and getting those done and getting those right. The second concept is generalization. With generalization, the programmer can see some commonality among multiple instances or domains of their problem and then can write the logic once for multiple domains. So you see the ability to generalize is going to make you a better programmer. More on that in a minute. Here's some examples of detail removal. How many of you know how your car brake system works in your car? Maybe not many of us. However, can you apply the brakes and make your car stop? Of course. Turning on a light. Exactly what is happening? But I can turn on the light. It's no problem. And here's another example. Got this image of the steering mechanism in the car. I never think about a rod extending down to the rack housing in order to I can't even explain it any further, but I don't need to know that. I just know I turn the steering wheel and my car turns. So I think you would agree that we don't need to understand the details of everything that we use. We just need to know the behavior of it. Now the textbook said that abstraction is a mental model. A map that we have here is also an example of a mental model. That is removing a lot of detail. So this was a map um, of what roads are going to be closed during the summer. And I see, I believe, building two is right here. I do not see where the computer labs or the networking labs are. My question is, for the purpose of this map, do I need to see that? No. It would probably be more confusing. You're going to gradually build your program by taking small, easy to understand steps, starting from a very generic view of the algorithm and then adding a few more details and adding a few more details. This is one of the earliest software design concepts invented in 71 by Nicholas Wirth. The author does a good example of what stepwise refinement is in the textbook. I'm jumping way into chapter six here. He gave us a problem that two numbers are going to be input and we have no way of knowing whether the user of the program is going to enter the smallest number first or the largest number first. However, the output must always be in numerical order. So what we have here is some pseudocode. Pseudo means false code is generally giving me the steps I want to write in my program. And so write and read are instructions that the computer will take and understand. So we're going to ask the user to input two values separated by a blank and press return. Then we're going to read that input of the first number and store it in this 
this variable, more on variables later, called number one. They will repeat it. The second number will be stored in number two. Notice here in italics, print them in order is not a statement that the computer understands. But this is the first phase in our stepwise refinement in writing the program. I know I need to print them out in order. So I'll just write this here. The next phase then focuses on just refining this step. How do we determine the order of the numbers? So what we're going to do is we're going to compare number one and number two using what's called a conditional construct, which in programming is called the if statement. And you'll be doing plenty of if statements pretty soon. So here, this ended up becoming these statements here. If number one is less than number two, then I want to print it first. Else, that means number one's not less than number two, then I want to print number two first. So I've written this program in small basic. Here it is. I've taken the pseudocode and then written it in the instructions understood by small basic. Now I'll execute that. Okay, I'm being prompted to enter my first number, so I'm going to enter 50. Now I'm being prompted to enter the second number, I'll enter 20. And notice that it output the sorted order, 20, 50, even though the larger number was entered first. But let's see if the program's gonna work if I reverse how I um, enter those numbers. I'll run it again. Okay, so now I'm gonna enter 20 first, then I'm gonna enter 50 first, and it did print it in sorted order. And you can test it with other numbers. It doesn't matter what numbers you enter. The logic should work and it should print in sorted. Now that was rather complex, I understand, and we're just getting started. And, and if as much as you can grasp out of this, mainly I want you to understand the idea of you know, building it out and building a little more. Can you just get the input? Well, that's easy and then move on from there. Okay, now what is generalization? Generalization is, as I said, when you see more than one instance or domain and then you can generalize something from all of it. So I have here um, different animals. So here I have chickens and I might be very specific and think, well, to give you instructions on how to feed the chicken. To feed the chicken, you put the chicken food in the chicken dish. To feed the dog, you put the dog food in the dog dish. To feed the bunny, you put the bunny food in the bunny dish. And then you might sit there and think, well, it's really the same regardless of the type of animal. So why don't I just write the instruction once? You're generalizing. To feed the animal, put the animal food in the animal dish. But what is animal? So animal is like a placeholder we will ask the user or the program will tell us, oh, the animal's going to be a horse. Then we'll take that idea of horse that, and we will apply it to this generalized instructions. To feed the horse, put the horse food in the horse dish. And you see any kind of animal, this instruction will work. So what would you rather do? Think of every possible animal and write a different instruction or write one instruction for all animals, and you see why generalization works. Here is an image that you've probably seen many times in uh, Windows. Almost all Windows programs has the same common behavior. They have the close window and the minimize and restore buttons right here in the top right corner. So does the programmer, every time they write a new program that's going to use a window, have to code this again and again? No, because that, co that code has already been written. In fact, Microsoft wrote it for me. I don't even have to write it. So every time I create a program that's gonna run in a window, I just will include that. It's automatically included when I add a form to my program. Wow, isn't generalization a great thing? Generalization actually allows me to use code that somebody else wrote and import it into my program. So you're going to learn about functions. So when you generalize, then you're probably gonna 
use functions, also called modules. So here is an image of a function machine. It's a black box. I don't know what's inside. Detail removal, generalization. With a function, you're going to put in a, an input, x, and then the function machine's going to do its thing and output something specific depending on your input. It's very much like algebra, actually. So, for example, if I wanted to calculate your age, I might ask you to input the year you were born. And then I might have an equation in here that says take this year and subtract the year you were born and I could output your age. So somebody might be inputting 1997. The output would be 22. Somebody else might be inputting um, 1984. And again, that would be a, a different output. Uh, we're going to cover more on this concept later, but generalization can help us improve our program with the concept of top-down design. And then top-down design is an extension of stepwise refinement, but you're thinking of a higher level system. And then you're creating functions and modules, whatever they were. Well, I just kind of referred to the function machine on the last slide. I'm going to tell you, the ability to see, to generalize is so key. And then, of course, generalization is a part of abstraction. So why is it that some software engineers and computer scientists are able to produce clear and elegant designs and programs while others cannot? And the answer is abstraction. Abstraction is the key to computing. Well, in the next few weeks, where will you see abstraction? We're going to start next week with binary numbers. Binary numbers abstract machine level representations. It's going to take electrical signals and say oh, that's a zero and that's a one. We're going to look at something called data structures and this concept of a queue waiting in line for a bank. And a queue is a model that actually came from waiting in line for a bank. And now we, have you heard of the term print queue? Yeah. So that was a model being used. Finally, detail hiding. If I put on my web browser and I type in www.microsoft.com, there's a lot of servers being hit and my request is being sent from one server to another until it hits the Microsoft server and then they have to get the HTML file and the image files, all that's being sent back through. There's a lot of detail I don't think about and I expect it to happen really fast.